For many parents of children with FASD, an important next step is understanding the connection between changes to the brain and their children's behavior. Paul Connor studies the structural changes of the brain caused by prenatal alcohol exposure. Where before they were thinking of their child as being willful and belligerent, they can look at it now, okay, this child has brain damage. That means that this child can't inhibit his, his or her responses as well as, as say, their healthy brother. Um, so that gives the parents the information that they need to change their perspective on, on their, their affected child and work with them in a different way. Really realizing that she's not mentally the age that she is physically um, knowing that you can't discipline her like any eight-year-old or, you know, nine-year-old. You can't just ground them and take away TV um, because mentally she's probably only about three or four. Uh, they're helpful. They're loving. They're very sweet kids, but it takes time with the structure. You just can't turn them loose like you can all the other kids. You know, you have to be with them. Um, we do a lot of environmental modifications. So we're proactively modifying our environment all the time to try and prevent the behaviors from occurring so that we don't have to discipline, you know, much. And when we do have to discipline, we really try and use natural and logical consequences. You know, something that's going to make that the consequence makes sense or it's connected to the behaviors. Otherwise, these kids don't get it. Deanna is a mother in recovery and works as an advocate for mothers who are struggling with addictions. After learning about FASD through her work, she realized that her son Mark had been affected by her drinking during pregnancy. Deanna contacted a family counselor for help managing Mark's aggressive after-school behavior. Imagine that your life and your home is like um, an airplane and he's in the cockpit and he wants, and he's trying to be the, you know, the navigator, but he doesn't want to be. He wants somebody else to be and he, what he, his acting out and everything is, is basically um, crying for that. You know, he wants rules, he wants boundaries, he wants to know exactly what the limits are and he's testing all of that with you and if you're not going to give it to him you know he's going to keep on so i bas so i did so i had to like lay it out deanna created a checklist for mark that outlines what he has to do every day when he comes home from school when you come in the door you know this is where your backpack goes just step by step you know and then he could go and look cross it off, know what he needed to do, um, and things started to change. You know, I never saw it like that. I never saw that he was, like, needing just a well-defined space and set of rules for him to be at ease, for him to feel comfortable, for him to not be spinning out of control. And um, afraid. Children with FASD have changes to their brains that can affect physical development, learning, and behavior. While the changes to the brain are permanent, the extent to which they affect a child's life depends on the kinds of support that are provided. Barista 3 early intervention programs are available in every state and are a good place to start getting a child help. Basically, it's just making sure that the kids are getting the services and get them ready in all the areas, cognitive, you know, development, physical development, to make sure that when they go to school, they have the best chance to succeed and uh, enjoy school. Some programs include playgroups for children with a wide range of issues, where parents can learn from experts and from each other. Anton is a happy, active little boy, but when he was born, doctors thought he might never walk. His mother never gave up on him, though, and she never gave up on herself. I spent probably around eight years trying to um, get off substances, alcohol and drugs, back and forth, treatment centers, doctors, psychiatrists, you know, various things, and I didn't stay clean much more than three months at a time. And then I use for like a year and then go back in. And then it kept getting worse and worse and worse, you know. And um, this last time, 
I ended up pregnant and really sick. Mara checked into a detox center and found out she was almost seven months pregnant. Anton was born a month later. I had no motherly instincts at all, and I didn't know how to hold him. And he was this tiny little thing, and he was constantly swaddled, because if you let him out of the swaddle, his, he was just shaking. Just, you know, not because he was scared, that's just what his body was doing because of the, the damage. Yeah, I was terrified. Mara transferred to a halfway house for women to continue her treatment and recovery. She decided she wanted to be a mother to Anton, but was worried about her ability to parent him. In the beginning, you know, the, the outlook was very, um, was not good, was not good at all. And, um, and he was diagnosed with full fetal alcohol syndrome at an early age, at eight months. While in treatment, Marit became part of a parent-child assistance program. Her advocate, Brenda, helped her find the services and support she needed to create a life for herself and her son. She just needed someone to back her and to give her a little hope. I guess to be hopeful when she couldn't be hopeful and to be that courage when she couldn't have courage. Marit felt an enormous amount of shame that her drinking had hurt Anton, but she decided to put this feeling aside and seek help for him. You know, when I started asking for help, you know, it was like shame. I just felt horrible. People are going to, you know, crucify me and stone me to death. And everybody is so happy to meet him and to meet me. And this is so great that you're getting involved. You know, and that just boosts up my self-esteem that, yes, I am doing things. You know, I am doing something for my son. And, and each time, you know, that I was praised for that, I was like, you know, yes, I can do this. Anton was underweight and had severe feeding difficulties. He was also overly sensitive to touch and to the sights and sounds around him. Brenda helped Marit find services to help Anton. A physical therapist recommended games that could help his motor skills. An occupational therapist showed Marit how to help him adjust to his environment. And a speech therapist taught Marit new ways to work on language with Anton. As Anton grew into a toddler, Marit and Brenda continued to find the early intervention services he needed. So like he goes to class, um, twice a week for two and a half hours, where he goes with other kids, you know, with various disabilities. Um, he goes there and then he has speech therapy there. Um, and uh, speech therapy is the big one because he was speech delayed, or is speech delayed. All of the therapies and special attention are paying off for Anton. He is already reaching milestones his doctors thought might always be out of reach. And he just in the last couple of months, he's been really taking off. Anton has also responded positively to the structure early intervention activities have provided. When he knows what to expect, he's able to open up and to learn new things and be aware of his surroundings better. You know, early intervention services are about keeping those delays to, to a minimum. With Brenda's help, Marit has found ways to help her son. They are beating the odds together. It doesn't matter how much money a woman has or the color of her skin. Drinking alcohol during pregnancy can permanently affect children, but support is available. If you know someone who has a substance abuse problem or who has been drinking during their pregnancy, support them in seeking help. There is no shame in wanting a better life for a child and recovering hope for the future. The most important thing for a child is to have a parent who's sober. Making it an awareness that you know that you drank during your pregnancy is the first step to changing your whole life. There's nothing that you can do about the past, but today, today, you can make some changes and you can make the difference in this child's life, in your life. You can start making healthier choices. And that statement alone, you know, if they're abstinent and in recovery, it's power. Here we thought we were had to pull together to, to teach Carly everything she needed to learn, when in essence she had been teaching us the whole time. That's what we want is what's best for our kids, whether they're two 
or 22 or 42. You know, that we want what is best for our kids. You just don't give up on them. You know, the Creator don't make junk. You don't give up on them. And you know, the big thing is I have a choice to be the kind of mother that I would want to be. I can have my children look at me and be happy with me being their mother. And it wasn't too late to get sober. And it wasn't too late to change my career. It wasn't too late to learn how to play in the mud. Uh, I'm a big proponent of it's never too late. It's meant to me, um, I'd have to say it's meant um, a life. If someone you know is seeking treatment for drug or alcohol abuse, use SAMHSA's Substance Abuse Treatment Facility Locator to find resources near you. For copies of this video, or for additional information and materials on drugs and alcohol, contact the National Clearinghouse for Alcohol and Drug Information. For additional information, resources, and training on FASD, contact SAMHSA's FASD Center for Excellence. If you are pregnant and concerned about how alcohol or drugs may be affecting your baby, contact Otis for help finding medical consultation near you. If you think you may have a child who was exposed to alcohol during pregnancy, contact the Circle of Hope, a birth mother's network at NOFAS, for support for you and your child.